Hi, welcome to Chat with Sunlight. Like Sunlight's curriculum offerings, we will explore homeschooling through the lens of a literature-based christ Center education. Join us for everything you might be interested in, for organizing your homeschool, connecting with others, and details on literature-based learning, and maybe a few sneak peeks. Hi, welcome to Chat with Sunlight. I am here today with one of our Sunlight moms, Samantha Gildenhaus. I would love for her to come and introduce herself I find over the years, as I have spent time with Samantha, her story just gets more and more interesting the more you just patiently hear parts of it. And I just am excited to have her come and share with us. Samantha, um, start with introduction of you and the kids and tell us a little bit about you, and then we will take it from there. Okay. Um, well, I'm a homeschool mom, and I have two boys, uh, Ruben and Matthew. Uh, Ruben has graduated out of homeschool. He's second, third year in uh, university. Um, Matthew is a senior this year, so he'll be going off um, in May. He'll be starting off on his first year. Um, what else is there to say? Uh, we've been homeschooling since the very beginning, which is will be 17 years total. I think I added it up from start to finish. So it's a career, uh, yeah, and it's been bumpy and fun and all those wonderful things all along the way. So where were you when you decided to start homeschooling? We were living in Tennessee at the time. Um, Ruben was, go was we started in pre-K, obviously. And we started, when we had to think about going to schools, we lived in an area that was really up and coming, good schools. We've always been able to buy in good school districts because we figured out that's the place to buy because you can resell as well. Um, but I don't know. We always just sort of had this feeling that we should homeschool. We don't know why. It's just one of those things that was placed in our hearts. Um, you know, when you look back, you can find all sorts of reasons why it was a good idea. Um, at the time, we were the only people we knew that homeschooled. And everybody else, I, I joined this little mom group and they all were were so happy to send their kids off to school and I was saying no I'm going to keep mine and they were why would you do that and well, we don't know we just feel we need to um so yes in Tennessee we've homeschooled through let's see Tennessee and we moved to Canada then down to um Alabama then back to Canada then now we're in Oklahoma so several countries several states um but always with sunlight. So how did you find sunlight? Oof, yeah, I had, as I said, I had no idea about homeschooling. So I had to do a lot of research. Um, I got online, just looked up homeschooling, found various curriculums, but curricula, see, I don't know, uh, that might work for us, that would suit us. And um, my mother-in-law had actually worked with at a school that used one. Uh, as an international school, they used something out of the States. And she was really very impressed with that. So I had, I selected three different ones I thought would work for us and went off to the curriculum fair in Nashville and just targeted those three books. And that's all I did. I spoke to them, looked at their stuff, went home. I didn't buy anything that day. I thought I'll make a choice once I've actually seen what they offer. And I really liked what I saw at Sunlight. Um, we have always loved reading books. We own so many books even before Sunlight. Now we have even more. So it it just seemed to work for us. We um, I like the way that we were able to pick it up and put it down whenever we needed to. Everything was worked out for us. It's easy to tweak and change to suit us. Um, so that's why we stuck to it all the time. So as, now that you're in your last year of homeschooling, do you feel like there's anything you would have changed, added, or not done that you, you know, different than what you did? Fortunately, we had moved, have moved several times. Um, so our school situation changed often. And I would think maybe because of that, it felt different all the time. In each each new town, each, each new country, we would go and explore and do stuff. We'd find people who would um, we'd join groups, we'd do stuff. So our, our homeschool changed often in, in that sense. Um, also, 
the only thing I did change was I found the math we were using was not working for us. So I chose something else and stuck to that. The same with the spelling. Um, I don't think I would change anything because we, what's so nice is that you can tweak it as you go. You could make those changes. You can replace things. You can leave things out. It's not a problem if you don't check all the boxes on the day. Um, so it's very versatile. I like what we what, what we received. And it worked for both boys equally well. Um, that was fortunate too. I, lo I, I love that you remind us that we don't have to check all the boxes because we have yeah. moms that want to check every box and you just don't need to with sunlight. They give you so much to do. You can do it all or not do it all, but it is. That's fine. So let me, I, I'm assuming our listeners and our viewers can hear your accent. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> tell us, obviously, you have an accent. Where is your accent from? South Africa. Okay. So you guys, you and your husband both are from South Africa and you then moved to Canada, correct? First. Yeah. Not, and so... Obviously, so now you, you have a heritage that is different than the average American using sunlight. Yeah. Um, is there things that you did to adjust the curriculum for the needs of your family is, to bring in extra? So like it, when you lived in Canada or to bring in about South Africa that you added to? I don't think I brought in anything extra. Um, the fact that we were in the US and Canada. Um, we were able to visit some of the places that we read about, which was wonderful. We were able to understand the history of the local people and why certain things were done the way they were, especially having lived in New York state, as well as in some of the Southern states. Um, the, and when we moved back to Canada, actually I had a few books that I lent to a different film school mom. And she said, these are fantastic, where did you get them? And the one was Paddle to the Sea. And it's all about the little journey through all the lakes and down to the sea, mm -hmm. which is very, uh, well, for her was wonderful to discover a book about Canada in our homeschool curriculum. Um, I've also learned a lot of stuff about my own country from sunlight, because sunlight is not just a US based we don't only learn U.S. history. There's mm -hmm. so much world history, so much about other cultures. Um, you get both sides of the story. So even though it might offend you in some ways because this is not what you were taught, like some of the stuff I learned from about South Africa, I was able to see the other side and realize, hey, there are other things that you don't necessarily know growing up. So it broadened my horizons about my own country and about the world. And the boys really have benefited by being um, not, how can I say, stuck in a culture, that this is the way it works. We were able to explore various cultures and make and understand people differently than if we had just focused on trying to be South African in America or Canadian in America, however it works. So one of the things that I, I already know about you, Samantha. I always find this like one of my fascination points. Um, Samantha, are you a U.S. citizen? Yes. Are you a Canadian citizen? Yes. Are you a South African? Yes. <laughs> Love. Sorry, I just I'm like I have a friend. She's a triple citizen. That's great. No, I didn't know it was possible, but as we went along, we discovered it is. And I always joke, you watch these spy movies and they go to their safe or their box under their bed and they pull out all these passports and the stack of money. Like mm -hmm. we have the stack of passports, we just need the stack of money. Well, if you find out how to get the stack of money, let me know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so growing up South African, do you speak another language in your house besides English? Yes, we speak Afrikaans. Uh, and I know you do. Johannes, her husband, he often will say something and I have to just kind of look at him like, and, and, and. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's based in Dutch, uh, but it has a lot of influence because it, it's, it's a young language for a young country. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of influence from the French, the English, the native languages that were there already. 
So um, apparently if you go to Belgium, a lot of people would understand us because of the commonality of, of the language. Um, and yes, we make there are words that just work best in Afrikaans that you cannot, the feeling is just not the same in English. So you have to use the Afrikaans word. Right. And it's funny, as the boys have learned it, they sometimes combine words um, like nowhere and over there in Afrikaans sound very similar. So Ruben put them together and just made up his own word that means both of them, which is great. We use it all the time. That's great. That is great. And I know that we have several of our moms that are in the South African Sunlight Group, as well as the Sunlight Connections Facebook group. And I've seen them post where their children have like done reciting in Afrikan. And so, oh, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of you moms that use sunlight. So. Yes, it's a, it is a very um, beautiful language in some senses, uh, though it's got these really harsh sounds in it. When my cousin from Australia visited us when we were living in South Africa, he said he landed at the airport and all these beautiful girls and he was really impressed until they all opened their mouths and these sounds started coming out and thought, oh, what's going on? Don't do that. <laughs> oh. well, yeah, Americans can't make those sounds. <laughs> we can't. And I struggle just to speak in English, so it's okay. <laughs> Tell me, Samantha, what is a typical... When both boys were home, what was a typical day in your house for doing school? We would we always try best uh, to get up at six with Johannes. Uh, we have breakfast together and he goes off to work. And then we would have a little bit of time just to be by ourselves and do some things that needed to be done. Um, and the boys would do some chores and so on. And breakfast would settle. Then we would uh, do some physical exercise in the summers go walk at the river or bike ride or do something in the winter we would do an exercise program at home and then school would start at about eight and go through to 9 30 we'd take a snack break and then till 10 and we'd go through till lunch and then after lunch finish up what needed to be done always school was finished when the work was finished um, very few times did we not be able to finish our day because we make plans. Um, often we would have more school days in our calendar year than the school local schools would require because if we did field trips or added stuff, those would be added to our school days. So we would have um, maybe a longer semester than others and uh, we would take our vacations in September or October when it's still nice and warm, but it's quieter. Yeah. So um, that's kind of how our week and our day went. Obviously, when Johannes came home, there'd be no school. Like, Daddy's home! And the day would just be lost to whatever had to be done. Um, so, uh, never mind. I'm not going to even ask you <laughs> to tell us about when Johannes works from home. How does it go? Oh, wow. Yeah, he did um, for COVID. He had they had the system where they would limit the amount of people in the office and they would rotate two weeks at home. No, it was one week at home, one week in the office, so that they only had 50% of the people there. And we set up the spare room and got him in there, all set up this, all, and he would pop out from time to time and want to talk to us and tell him, No, 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 we're busy with school. Snack time is at 9 30, you may come out then. Right. And he'd have to go back and do his work. So, Samantha, you talked about exercise. And here I know that you guys, um, when you used to live in Alabama, we were in a group with you guys. And we that's how we met it was with our kids shooting archery. Tell me, so your family, are you interested in archery? Oh, yes. Yes. The boys tell me that it's taking over our lives. But that's not completely true. Um, yeah, we got started within that group in 4-H. The boys were able to, I got them signed up. And then it seemed like so much fun. So um, when it developed into a USA Archery Club and we could grow as adults, uh, we joined up. And the boys have since then sort of phased out and lost interest. Um, but Johannes and I have carried on and we really enjoy it. 
Uh, we shoot at local, state, national level. One thing that I did, or I try and do, is to look several years ahead. It's something I I learned when I was a when I was younger, and an older lady came up to me, um, a person in our church, and said, "Hey, you know, look at these things in your life because right now it doesn't make sense, but later on it's going to be beneficial to um, just look at certain things." Uh, because she had mentioned when she got married, her her mom had so many connections that they just all banded together, planned the wedding, did the whole thing because of stuff she had done in her life. And those were some of the words of wisdom that you receive from older women like you're supposed to. Right. So I've always tried to look a little ahead and say, what are people five years ahead of me doing? What are they doing 10 years ahead of me? So that I know what I'm in for as it comes along. And what so many moms, especially homeschool moms, told me is that you give your life because you are a homeschool mom, then stay up and away and you have no idea what to do with yourself because you haven't planned for who you are going to be when your children graduate. Right. And so getting involved in archery has been um, something that we can have as our own. Even though it was a whole family thing, all four of us competed together, traveled, and now that they're older, we are allowed to travel by ourselves and go and do stuff. Um, and it, it's just something to look forward to and to be who I am from time to time. Not just me as mom or wife, but me. I'm the archer. I'm the person on the line by myself. And and Samantha is very much the archer. So, <laughs> so those who don't know about archery, there are two different kinds, really, Basically, there are two different kinds of bows. You have a compound bow and a bare bow, correct? And a recurve. Recurve. Yes. Is that a recurve is the same as a bare bow? It's the same kind of bow, yes. Um, yes. So it would be uh, look similar, except that recurves have long stabilizers. They allow to use sights, various aids. Um, bare bow shoots without those aids. Well, most without most of those aids. So it's a little... A little harder, you would say, in some senses, but way more fun. And how's the, so you say you do some local, and I know you give archery lessons, don't you? Yes, we have um, a little club that we run, and um, I have a few students. So I'm actually a level three USA certified coach. We have a club, and at the moment we're also running some tournaments. So it really does keep me busy. Uh, indoor season is very busy for us uh, compared to outdoor season. And so you run this club, you have your group. And I, I know that you also serve on the Oklahoma Archery Board. What would you call that? Yes, it's the USA Archery Oklahoma uh, Association. At the moment, I am the, what do you call it? interim president that's it yes well they just need to keep you there <laughs> i'm sure you keep everyone organized i have come to her house she runs it like a well-oiled machine and it is a blast to be spend time with her so in your competitions and here's i i just want to try to get this out of you what's the highest that you've competed at national level um usa Outdoor Nationals, the highest I have ranked in Nationals um, at a competition was sixth. The highest in the US Open was first. Uh, my highest overall ranking, and they vary as you do competitions, was okay. third in the country. Yes. So you you actually, you are, to me, you are like, you're one of my go-to archer friends. I can, <laughs> I, I can piddle in my backyard. You know that I have the ability to, but I just piddle in my backyard <laughs> well we I have lots to learn as well so I get everywhere I go and I meet other archers I'm always asking stuff because they know things that I don't that I can pass to my students um, that I can use myself you know we are always learning like sunlight says it's a lifetime of learning you never stop so if it's even no matter if it's a book learning if it's practical we are always trying to improve our skills as archers and um, 
just in general, you know, all everything I I try and do, I. You ask me to bake a cake. Oh, I haven't done that before. Let me see how it's done. And, you know, we get through things, but yeah, it's, it's a learning curve in a lot of times. She says bake a cake because I asked her to make a wedding cake and she <laughs> did a phenomenal job of it. So it was gorgeous. She has many, many skills. And I am blessed to call you as one of my good friends that. I have gotten to know you and your boys and your husband over the last, I don't know, six years, seven years, many years. Yes, I don't know, many years. And um, every time I spend time with her, I walk away going, oh, I could spend more time. I could spend more time. <laughs> She's helped me think through school stuff. I know we've talked school, you know, how to, you know, just the different things that our kids are doing. And Sitting in her house, there's bookshelves all around. And you you can sit there. If you're a sunlighter, you sit there going, oh, I've seen that book. Oh, I remember that book. Oh, I know that book. It's like walking through memory lane, just kind of walking, looking at the books. Yeah. Um, is there any level that you did with your boys that has become one of your favorites that you think through, oh, we really had a great time doing X level? Oh, well, obviously we're way more involved when they are younger, when we're doing the readers and the read alouds and all mm -hmm. of those things. And the, most of those are still my favorite ones. We have our favorite books. Um, every year we'd actually, on the day before school, we'd plan when school's starting, the day before we'd unpack previous things and new things and put them on the shelf so each boy would have their shelf with their stuff. And it'd just be in a random order. And as we went through them, they would start ranking them. So they put them, best, the ones they liked best, to the front. And then, and it was it was quite amazing to see how each one, like when, when Matt, Ruben did it, how he ranked them. And then Matthew would come along. And he'd sometimes rank them completely differently. And I'd be surprised. And then they wouldn't be anything like I would have ranked them at all. Um, so we all have our own little favorite things. Uh, when the... The boys really loved Lord Peter Wind because I would read for three hours, school would be done, and they'd have no questions. That was their favorite, favorite. So even now, when they're saying I must, you know, they want to do, they don't want to do something. They say, no, let's do Lord Peter Wind. <laughs> and <laughs> they'll just spend all day reading. Your boys, your boys. <laughs> They can talk you into everything. So I, yes. And we're very proud because Ruben is in ROTC. He's the oldest. Yeah. Yes. So he is one of our military young soldiers. Matthew, if I remember right, he's talking about being an artist. And I really would have thought he was computers, but well, wow. He is. Uh he wants to do graphic design for animation. Right. So he wants to do, it's going to be a dual thing. So he needs the art side of it to be able to do the computer side of it. Right. And I think he will do excellent. I've seen some of the things around the house for him. Mm -hmm. um, Samantha, if you could give advice to a brand new mom, either American or not American, um, what advice would you give? Our brand would... new homeschooling mom. Let's... Homeschooling, yes. Really that, you know, it might seem really important right now, that little thing, but on the bigger scheme of things, it's not going to be. Uh, if they don't get it the first time, it's going to cycle through again. It's going to build upon the, next, the previous one. History repeats and you just learn new facts. The math, you can go back and do again until they understand or say, hey, let's take a break. Um, Try and pace it at their speed because mm -hmm. sometimes we rush through things and I thought, well, wait, stop. And But they were fine with it. Other times I had to slow down and really make sure they understood. Um, but really to enjoy it with them. If we learn something new, find a way to go and experience it. We were, as I said before, we had we were fortunate enough to visit a lot of the places we read about. So whenever we went anywhere, we would try and find a museum we could see or we would 
experience something that we had learned outside of the box and outside of the classroom. And those are the things that they really remember. Um, the time I spent with them, not everything they learned. That's right. Well, Samantha, you're right. Just enjoy that process. And going to the museums and doing the things, as you said, is the application of what they've learned. So, yes, yes. that's yes. why those things sink in, I think, more. Yes, definitely. Well, Samantha, thank you so very much for being on with me today. I am ecstatic to have you join me. Um, and I am watching your career in archery and maybe we'll post, you know, Sunlight Moms, where, where they are today. <laughs> so, and congratulations on your final year you're finally graduating as well yes I am I'm going to I'm going to print myself a diploma there you go <laughs> thank you Jonna thank you for joining us today do you have an idea for a podcast topic or do you want to chat with sunlight on an upcoming episode email us at connections at sunlight.com